all about a person, and then another person, and another person. Well, there's a few people in this story. Do you want to hear about it? Yeah. Can you go out there and sit with them? And, yeah. Well, because the stage can be crowded. So. Okay, can they sit? Yes. Have a seat. All right, see you later, Mr. Donovan. In fact, the stage is going to be so crowded, I'm going to stand over here and stay out of the way. This story that I, that I know, that I'd like to tell you all about, is about, well, the first person, a teacher. And her name is Mrs. Hawkinson. Can you all say that? Mrs. Hawkinson. Yes, and she had a class of, let's just say, special, very different people. Each of them was very different. The first in her class was Margaret. Now, Margaret was a very smart person, very attentive, paid close attention in class, but she didn't like to speak. She was very quiet, kind of kept to herself. Now, the second person, the second person wasn't so quiet. His name was Joey. Now, he was also very smart, but a little prideful. In fact, he liked to tell people how smart he was. Amazingly smart. Yes. Well, Joey. Now, the third person is Susie. Now, Susie, she didn't care so much for the books. It was about the latest fashion, about being popular, and most of all, about being right. She wanted to be the one that told people what to do. The fourth person. Yeah. He was in his own little world. We're not quite sure where that is. His name was Bucky. And Bucky had quite an imagination, and in fact, he rather would play games than be in class. But today, he's back here. Bucky. Now, this is a very special day. For you see, Mrs. Hockenstock had found a very special book the week before, and she was excited about sharing this with the class. But first, before she could tell them about the special book, she needed to take roll. I just want to tell you that I have a very, very special, exciting book to show you today. And oh my goodness, you just took the picture. This is so special. But first, we need to make sure everyone is here so no one misses out. Okay, so let's see. Um, Margaret? Margaret, be louder. Loud. Margaret. Mm. Bold, oh, Margaret, bold. Out. Here. Thank you. Joey? Teacher, the presence of Joey is accounted for. <laughs> yes, you know that. to study and prepare for the next lesson. A few moments later, the door opens, and Margaret steps quietly into the room. In fact, so quietly as to hope nobody would see her. You see, she wanted to get the first look at that book. Even before class, even before Mrs. Hawkins talked, she wanted to see all the pretty pictures, because she had heard so much about this special book. She was so wrapped up in this book, in fact, that she didn't see the door open a second time. And in stepped Joey. Now, Joey, Joey didn't want Margaret to know he was in the room yet, but he thought, I know an exciting way I can let her know I'm here. And he walked up and pulled her pigtails. When he did this, Margaret ripped the special book. She was so scared that she began to cry, but Joey said, don't worry, I'll save you. I still fix the book. No problem's too big for me. Okay, which 
him at front. So Joey went looking for all sorts of ideas. Okay. He thought about yeah, glue, but there was no glue. Oh, yeah. He looked around for a welding torch, but there the was no welding torch. The and then he saw it. Hey! He worked furiously. He knew he didn't want anybody to catch him. He wanted to fix the book. He was hoping he could make it so that Mrs. Hawkenstock wouldn't know this. So never know. Been so, never know. so he worked furiously. He got all the all his hairs fixed. And he couldn't look down. And he was rushing. And he was rushing because he barely got the, he barely got the book finished and taped back together. And he and Margaret rushed out of the classroom just in time as the bell rang again for recess to be over. Now, Mrs. Hawkinstock had seen the whole thing, and she went back to her desk, waiting on the kids to come back in. Now, the kids did not know that Mrs. Hawkinstock had been to the back of the classroom this whole time. So they came back in, hoping that nobody would notice what happened. Well, Bucky was still in the underworld. Mrs. Hawkinstock, I must say, recess was not nearly as <clears throat> intellectual as I would have appreciated it to be. It was too much. Physical exercise, not mental capacities. In fact, they tried to keep her attention off the book as much as they could. As they all got seated, Mrs. Hockenstock got ready for that lesson. Okay. Now that we're back from recess, which I hope you enjoyed, it's time to look at a very special book. Oh my. That is not true. Yes. That is not yes, true, teacher. Is. I demand the defense make its opening statement from the court's permission. Okay. First off, I must confess that I was the one who did it. I did it. The innocent must be protected. It was not Margaret. It was I. I did it. Justice must triumph. Margaret, do you have something you want to tell me? It was me. I got the dragon. Margaret. Susie and Susie also looked at Mrs. Hockenstock. Mrs. Hockenstock looked at Bucky. And even Bucky looked at Mrs. Hockenstock. And then something that hadn't happened that whole day before, Margaret stood up and said to Mrs. Hockenstock, Bucky knew what he had done was a lie, too. I'm 
sorry, Mrs. Hockey Stock. There wasn't a dragon, and I didn't slay it. But if there was, I would take my pistol out and shoot it. that you cared about. But even in, to protect your best friend, it's not okay to lie. You may have been a little more like Susie, who knew the truth. And you would tell the truth, but you do it for the wrong reasons. Not to be honest, but to hurt somebody else, like she did Margaret. And while Bucky, well, I don't know. But say, maybe some of you sometimes just make up stories. Maybe not as crazy as Bucky's. Maybe you don't talk about dragons and such. But you make up a story about something that didn't even happen at all, hoping that nobody would find out what the truth really was. Each of us, even myself, have probably lied in some way. I know I have. Even the simplest little lie, such as not telling what you know to be true at all, I've done that. But the Bible says that God will forgive us if all we do is ask Him. Admit that we're wrong, just as they did. They admitted to Mrs. Hockenstock what they had done, that they hadn't told the truth, that they had lied to her. And just like Mrs. Hockenstock was able to forgive them, God promises us He will forgive us, no matter how big our lie, no matter how big the story. Like Bucky, we might make up. God promises to forgive us. Let's bow our heads and pray. Dear Lord, I ask that if any of us have told a lie, even the smallest kind, that we wouldn't be afraid right now to tell you, Lord, about that lie, to apologize to the people that we hurt, to ask your forgiveness, that we can be right with you, so that we can then be more open to hearing your voice, to hearing your direction, and to following your authorities over us like our teachers. Help us to be more respectful of those teachers and more respectful of our parents. To tell them the truth always. You're now praying. 